know, normally I can sum it up in a sentence or two. Uh, not possible. <laughs> so you talked about the centrality of imagination. Yes. And, the, and yet in the sciences with all the math and all the numbers and all the computers and all the technology, you elevate imagination, something close to my heart, as a central part. Why is imagination so central? Others have said it. Einstein said, what counts as imagination? But another way of putting it is that when you look at the creative process in science and, you know, a new technology, the best that comes into medicine, uh, you find that uh, the ideal scientist is uh, one who thinks like a poet and works like a bookkeeper. Wow. <laughs> so something else you said that was wonderful is wherever all the commotion is, listen and then run away. Yeah. Go to the place where the other guys aren't. It's like, almost like a business idea. Compete no. where the other guys aren't. But you then said you want to be, if you can, the world's expert in that esoteric while also being the world's generalist so you're open to the ideas from everywhere else that are there for the taking. Exact formula for success. Exact formula. Okay. okay. You then also said math turns out to turn a lot of scientists off and we need way more scientists. And so I heard you speaking to the younger folks, if math is pushing you back, don't worry so much about it. Calculus at age 32, while a full professor at Harvard, says if you're not doing so well with calculus, you can still be welcome in the fraternity and sorority of scientists. I have secret, that right? Well, the secret I tried to uh, unveil was that um, you will be making advances of your own prior in most fields to uh, mathematical uh, reasoning and it is very easy and simple when you reach a certain point that you need see that the analysis cannot be pushed farther or the results cannot be properly analyzed without a more advanced form of reasoning and technique you yeah. get a collaborator why are these good articles in nature and science now have 30 20 or 30 authors Right, so you can call in the mathematicians when you need them. Focus on the thinking, focus on the learning, focus they're, on the imagining. They're out there waiting to be summoned. And then one last thing here, <laughs> sort of like the lawyers. Call in the lawyers when you're done sort of structuring what you want, and the lawyers will paper it up. Not perfect analogy, but close enough. So you said... <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. All right. No argument there. You said something that I just was struggling with because I had to stop writing. For every problem, there exists a species that is ideal for its solution, right? The answers, essentially, and the questions are both out there. It's not just a world of answers, it's a world of questions. Yes, uh, and uh, it's up to you to have found uh, an interesting question, a problem, perhaps, that others have toyed with, but you focus on. And then to look for, well, we've seen examples of it, and it's, it's routine in molecular and cell biology especially, which are analytic and bottom-up type of research, to select the ideal uh, organism for its solution. So we depend on those gut cat bacteria for a lot of our knowledge of human molecular genetics. We depend on an in insignificant little roundworm for a lot of what we know about the organization of the um, uh, of the nervous system, and so on. So, yes, that's that principle. Ed, thank you so much. It was a gift, as we all knew it would be. An thank honor you, and a pleasure. Thank you very much.